music producer. Something I talk about pretty frequently is the necessity of having multiple streams of revenue as an independent music producer. Not only for when you're actually producing, but what about those days after you stop producing? You got to make sure that you have streams of revenue that are going to live on even further than your current career. That being said, one stream of revenue that I think gets often overlooked is music distribution, aka streaming, getting your music on Apple Music, getting your music on Spotify, etc., etc. Now, the number one spot that I go to to make sure that I distribute my music properly and ensure that I get my music to every store possible is DistroKid at distrokid.com. I know you've heard me speak about it multiple times on my YouTube channel, but I got to tell you, there's a reason why it's the number one that I go to. For $19.99 per year, I can upload an unlimited amount of music throughout the year. As producers, you know we make an abnormal amount of music in comparison to songs that get created, so it's important that you use this as a consistent stream of income. If you'd like to sign up to DistroKid today and get your music to every major distributor, go to distrokid.com forward slash VIP forward slash Curtis King to get 7% off. You are listening to the Curtis King Podcast. Music producers, welcome to another episode of the Curtis King Podcast. We are on remote location, obviously, as we are all quarantined down. But uh, we're joined by a very special guest, uh, Larry O. Larry O, how you doing first and foremost? I'm great, man. I'm great. Living. Glad to have you Living the dream. You know, working, busy, thankfully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, Yeah. that's, That's something that... I think a lot of people take for granted and probably a lot less so now because of what's going on. How has your your quarantine time been, man? It hasn't been much different, honestly. I yeah. mean, it's different from my <laughs> wife and family because, you know, they're used to normal, quote, normal lifestyle. But right. I've always like been locked in the studio, man. It's not much different for me, honestly, just just not being around as many people. That's the only real difference. Right. So so for those who are are uh, unfamiliar with the Larry O brand, which you should definitely get yourself familiar with if you're not, um, how, how would you describe what it is that you do? Um, I make beats mainly, you know, started off as just making beats. But uh, now what I do mainly in, is like if people know me now, it's mainly because of my tutorials that I've been doing the quick tutorials on Instagram. Like right. basically like a minute or under, sometimes a little bit longer, depending. But I think the majority of people know me for my teaching now right. of music production. And, and and man, those tutorials, that's the reason why, um, you know, you first came on my radar, bro. Like you were you were so and you still are relentless. Like you grind <laughs> as if you're still trying to get to where you're at. And 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 as if like you're starting from zero and you're saying yep. to yourself, nobody, you know, nobody's uh, nobody knows who I am. But you obviously have a lot of reputable people that uh, love what you're doing. You have a lot of producers in the community that love what you're doing. But you got on my radar from the Explore page on Instagram, which, you know, I, I find myself just kind of going through there to find new content to, you know, see what the producers community is talking about. And I kept seeing your logo. Uh, the animated <laughs> logo that popped up. That was the first thing I saw. And I was like, yeah. first of all, it looks, it look, kind of looked like me. And I was like, wait a minute, I ain't put, who, who, who put this out? No, nah, um, but, but no, I first saw that. And then what I noticed was that famous tag, man. That if you get me. And, I, you know, people, yeah. people, well, producers specifically sleep on the, um, the necessity of having, that is a part of your your presentation, those things to be remembered by, because um, I don't remember the first time we spoke, but I know I was giving props and giving respect to what you're doing. And then you popped up in my my live stream and I was like, yo, that's the Larry O. That's, the, that's him. That's here. Here you go. He's here. <laughs> um, but even then, since then, I mean, you've even surpassed my, my audience on on uh, on IG and you did it in a way where, you know, you stayed kind of above the fray away from the controversy anything that was going on and um you just did your work and you showed up consistently uh how how, just head down and work how important was was the consistency for you and what sort of inspired uh that mindset because i want to dig into sort of what led before that but i want to get to these points because i think this is this is what a lot of producers uh can probably benefit from your story and hearing yeah, the, I think the consistency played a huge role in in where I'm at right now. You know, in 
in just a year, um, you know, I've gained almost like 100,000 followers on Instagram and it's Correct. I'm about to hit 100,000 soon. So it'll be a year, I think, like the middle of May. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but I mean, it, without the consistency, I wouldn't have been able to do that at all. You know, I started off by doing maybe like two or three posts a week. And then um, I knew that the goal was to get to one a day and maybe t possibly two a day. Mm -hmm. And um, I've gotten to that and I've been sticking with that for maybe seven months now, six, seven months. So half of that time. And then I f I've seen like ridiculous growth right. and just like and love in general, you know, networking and um, business Everything just went up because of that consistency. So that's why I still, like you said, I'm still doing that as if um, I have a whole lot to prove because I, I think I do still have a whole lot to prove. Sure. And I want to keep growing and I want to keep inspiring new producers and the same producers. I don't want to let anybody down. I want to stay with that um, mindset and inspiration. And hopefully that carries on to other producers, too, where they see my consistency and they're like, yo, the one thing that I always notice about Larry O is that. He's he's there every day. Yes. He's there every single day. I see him every day. And um, that's number one reason why I think I'm at where I'm at right now is was, the consistency. Was there any kind of research that went into initial uh, uh, your initial push on Instagram? I mean, I think that's a big major question I get from producers is what social media do I start with first? Um, should I have all the different social medias? Was there any kind of research or courses that you took or was it just really kind of just trial and error? It was really trial and error. And it was a lot of me using Instagram the most. I think I used I, and I still do use Instagram the most out of any social media platform. So I just and, I, and I've always been the type and I think that's why I got into beat making, too. And I've always been the type to just break thing down, things down and reverse engineer things and figure out how somebody did that. How did this dude make that beat? You know, how did Timbaland make that beat? How did he make that that synth, that sound right there? Um, I've always been that type. So I think the same followed with Instagram where I was like, yo, how are these people getting so many views? How, how are they growing their businesses on Instagram? So I think that took years for me, literally like years for me to watch, study uh, accounts. Like I think Gary V is definitely number one, like for everybody out here. Like it's, it's just like a no brainer. I follow, I've been following him for the past couple of years and just applying as many things as I can to my brand and paying attention to his branding, what he does, he always says, like, just watch what I do. Just watch. Just copy what I do, but put it into your own brand. Do your own thing with the way I do it, you know? Right. I, I think that's that's a crucial step in it, man. I, I remember um, I remember seeing, uh, well, I had an epiphany in the midst of kind of like following Gary Vee like a lot of folks do. And uh, one of the epiphanies that I was having was the fact that um, – I was trying to really figure out, like, what is the message here? Like, what what is what is it that Gary V wants from us? And the message that I had and I shared it out there was the fact that I don't think he wants us just to copy what he does without understanding what works for us. It's almost like he's giving us uh, a buffet of content ideas to borrow. Yeah. But I think at some point he wants us to find our own voice. And I think that that's. That's where you took it at. And I was a very, very crucial pivot. Um, and I shared that. And he, he he was like, exactly. I was like, oh, I got a response from Gary V. What? Uh, but <laughs> if he's co-signing yep. that, then I, I have to believe that, I, you know, I was on to something with that. But yep. I think that's an important piece is that you figured out, OK, the, this is an example. This is a template. This is a startup for me. This is something that I can use to kind of um, guide my way through. Uh, but also there exists within that, and we talked about it briefly, uh, a mentality. Uh, every Everybody has their own mantra. Everybody has sort of their own, um, I guess, like their one sentence phrase that is what they stand by, especially in a time where they're getting to rev up, rev up and really get the work in. And you said something to me on the phone last time we were speaking that uh, really resonated with me. You remember what that was? Yeah, basically that... Uh Nobody's going to save you and <laughs> nobody's coming to the rescue. What does Nobody that mean? Is, uh, that basically is like, I mean, and, and we're all guilty of this. You know, I think a couple of years ago, I was in the same position where I was trying to shoot my shot with nothing to back it up. You know, I was trying to DM the wrong the DM people. I, I think that I was inspired by and just like maybe for some return of, uh, um, I don't know, like 
just for them to look at what I was doing and to recognize it, you know, some sort of recognition. I was looking for that, but I had nothing to provide in value. I had no value to provide that person. So I was just like reaching out saying, hey, basically, I was one of those guys just, hey, can you check my stuff out? I'm a huge fan. Like I was literally one of those dudes, but I quickly realized that that does zero. It does nothing at all. Nobody is going to like and I and I told you I said this on the phone, too. I was like, Timbaland is not going to play my beat. Timbaland is like, at least if you have that mentality of they're just not going to listen. Right. Then if I mean, if if and when they do, I think people will reach out to you that like through other ways, through social media. Like I've realized that the less I DM'd people and the more I just concentrated on the content and the work mm -hmm. ethic, the more results I've gotten and the more people have reached out to me over the last year. And it's nuts. Like I was in a live stream with you in. It's folks that I have met in person, like legendary producers out here on the West Coast. Shout out to Swift D that show up in your live stream. And they're not just showing up to be like, I'm here. Show me attention. They're showing up, hitting you with your own catchphrase. You, you, <laughs> right. if you, you, you get me. And I'm like, yo, do you <laughs> understand that that's Swift D? But, I, but you know, yeah. I think that's how it happens for a lot of us, man, is that. At some point, you have to make a commitment to the grind. You have to make a commitment um, that no matter who shows up, no matter who doesn't show up, you're going to show up and you're going to mm -hmm. get it done. And I think that's where it's a crucial pivot in that it's almost like I remember reading about the law of detachment and how when you stop wanting something, that's when you finally find it, whether it's your keys in the house, whether it's, you know, just some kind of result you want out of your significant other when you stop 100%, wanting bro. it. It's just how it happens. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. That's exactly what happened. I think once I started just focusing on the work, mm -hmm. the content, the skill, the talent, once I started focusing on that, getting better at everything, get a better, getting better at my videos, spending more time editing, spending more time thinking of content ideas and right. uh, recording stuff, just and less of the other stuff, you know, following less BS on Instagram and social media, Facts. following less negativity, uh, following more pages like Gary V, like you, Cymatics, uh, et cetera. You know, the mm -hmm. list goes on. Following more pages like that, just straight inspiration um, and motivation. That's how I continue to be motivated, just seeing everybody do their thing. And what I'm doing is just a combination of what everybody's doing in my field and yeah. out of my field that's successful, really. Yeah, but nobody would ever know what your what your formula is, which is so dope, because I think that's what it is. I was always taught that if you take from one source, it's plagiarism. If you take from multiple sources, it's called research um, in any any realm in school. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. you, you They want you to yep. cite your resources. But if you take from multiple resources, that in turn is just called research. Um, yep. uh, so, you know, props to you. But let's talk about a little bit about that in terms of, you know, before you even got into all of this. Uh, you know, what kind of got you into music in general? Because I know, I know you, you speak about a time that you had where you were you were in in a band. You were, see, you were the drummer, correct? Yeah, I was like the I was the drummer slash producer. You know, That's I crazy. was crazy uh, because I started making beats. I started making beats first. And then uh, a few of my friends had a band. They always had bands and I was never a part of it. I never played an instrument, nothing. Mm -hmm. And I would just go to their shows a lot. And a couple of them started a new band and one of them was already the drummer but he wanted to end up being like the front man he's like yo he's like just learn drums maybe one day like you just play drums with us or something like that so i was like all right i already know how to make beats i kind of got to learn for drums beats. <laughs> he just told you just <laughs> learn drums like yeah, just go ahead and just learn drums that's crazy <laughs> yeah so he taught me he, t he taught me some of the basics okay and you know i think i was online watching videos like everything else and uh, i learned drums and I was okay, you know, starting out pretty bad, actually. <laughs> but uh, we, uh, so yeah, I joined the band and then we always had the goal of, of being a hip hop metal band, mm. but we just didn't have the resources or I didn't have the skill to really combine both worlds like we wanted to yet. So it took a long time, but I just, so I just played drums and it was just a normal like guitar, bass, drums, vocals type of band. There was a rapper and a screamer mm -hmm. and uh. From then it grew and I threw my production side of things and I, I finally like figured out how to get all that in there and combine both worlds of the hip hop and the metal side of things with, right. you know, different like hip hop sounds, synths, like you name it, like artificial sounds, VSTs sure. inside of the metal music, you know, and combine those and be able to play those live on stage. 
it was tough getting used to it, figuring it out, but I did it, you know, and being the drummer, it's like I had to, I had to do these things with click tracks. So I had to wear headphones. I had to Man. put backing tracks on an iPod mm -hmm. and have, have it routed in a crazy way so that the, <laughs> the, the audience would hear all the sounds, but not the click. It was ridiculous, but I finally got to it. And then, um, you know, we built that up and we eventually like did some touring locally, regionally, and then we got signed. I mean, I'll try to speed the story up, but we got signed to this uh, smaller label mm -hmm. by uh, the guy who is in Asken Alexandria. It's a big metal band. Okay. And he started his own label and we were one of the first, we were the first band that he signed Wow. in uh 2014 and we got signed that year we went into a big studio and in long island and we got on warp tour that year it was our first like real what? tour see these are stories all in I'm one even, year these are stories i'm hearing for the first time so i'm like I'm, i forget that i'm doing an interview but i'm like what <laughs> so the warp tour comes around and 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 things yep. are looking really 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 good man that's that's crazy that's yeah. So then, what does that take things from there? Like, because I mean, how, how, I'm trying to figure out how does that segue from you on the warp tour? You sign, you know, as a drummer. You weren't a traditional drummer. You had to learn the craft. You on YouTube, and then all of a sudden, we fast forward to now, and we got a Larry O that's giving FL Studio tutorials, but also has <laughs> this skill set in EDM. How the hell? How the hell you get here? What 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 led here? <laughs> I don't know, bro. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm, just... I'm talking talking shit because I know I know like how 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 yeah. ridiculous the story of where i'm at right now in relation to 2014 two different people yeah, so i bro. can understand it from my own experience but please explain that to me in the best way you know how <laughs> yeah i mean and we're talking i mean it feels like a lifetime ago but really we're talking six years ago yeah. you know what i'm saying it's yeah. it's crazy the band really only stopped going uh maybe three years ago mm -hmm. i think it was 2017 we stopped everybody just kind of went their own separate ways where, you know, it was becoming to a point where, like, we left the label. We wanted to get out of that situation. We felt like we weren't being pushed. And um, it was just a weird situation. There was kind of a conflict of interest in there that we wanted to get away from. Right. And it became, like, not a mess, but we ended up getting out of it. And then we kind of just, like, died out, you know? Like, people's financial situations aren't where they want them to be. We're right. doing tours where we're not making any money. So it became that, and everybody just was like, all right, we're getting to that age where we kind of have to like figure things out and and do what we got to do. Right. So that happened in 2017. And from there, I just went into like overdrive on just myself and um, this. And I, ha I also had a side project where you mentioned the EDM with Peter Piffin, where um, he was a client at first. And I was just like doing hourly rates with him and selling him beats. Right. And then it became a point where I was like, yo, the, the music that we're creating is like too dope. I'm like way too into this to just be doing hourly stuff. I want to and really invest time into this. So I did that and it became a he uh, an, a hip hop EDM project. As you can see, I'm like bending. I like to blend a lot of genres. Yeah. So yeah. he he was into a lot of EDM and he's a rapper singer. So he got me into EDM really. He like kind of forced me into EDM. So let me he was ask like, you. yo man, he's like, you you got into EDM, bro, you'll kill it. I was like, I don't know, man. I was I was I was close minded <laughs> to it. But I eventually I came around and, and and got pretty okay with it. I had that same conversation with the 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 the, the guy that is known today as Kenny Beats when he was part of a, a EDM group called Loud Pack. And um mm -hmm. at that time he was like, Yo, Curtis, man, if you just change your name change your name to like some other different moniker he was like bro he's like you come in this world and just like leave leave behind what you have he's like bro i'm telling you you'll you'll kill it over here and i just wasn't ready to do that because i was too attached to it yeah. he's like no more selling beats online he was like hey if you just come here and do that same trap stuff you're doing but like incorporate some build-ups and some some drops right. and the He's like, man, you could you could kill it, and I was like, nah, I don't know about that one, Kenny, but uh, but no, that was really good advice. So I think I think your story is very relatable because I mean you're from Providence, Rhode Island, correct? Yep. Which is something we don't really hear a lot about, at least on the West Coast. We don't we don't hear a lot about. Um, you know, folks having all of these opportunities to work with EDM artists are to get signed uh, to, to to labels and things like that. Uh, you know, so do you look at being from Providence, Rhode Island as a as a, a um, as a sort of like a, you have an advantage or is it, is it a disadvantage? Because I think a lot of people feel like they come from uh, cities 
are regions that are not really being shine a huge light on. But mm-hmm. here you are, you got placements with Jim Jones and you, know, you working with EDM folks, you know, that, that are really legends in their own right. And, and how, how is that possible? And then, too, do you think it's an advantage or disadvantage to be from? I mean, I think now in in um <clears throat> in 2020, the possibility with the Internet and social media is ridiculous. It doesn't matter where you're from, really. It doesn't matter. Um, I think in the aspect of like when we started out as a band, I think it really mattered. Like we we were at the point where like, yo, we got to we got to get out there. You know, the Internet wasn't what it is now. When we first started, we had to go out and do shows and reach people that way. That was like the way then it wasn't like social media was there and it was growing. It was getting a lot bigger, but it, it isn't it wasn't like as close to what it is now. So. Wow. Back then for doing that sort of thing, if you're a band or if you're an act where like you know that you're going to need touring, it's uh, location is key and touring is key. So definitely getting out of that area, I think no matter where you're from, but if you're in that situation and you're from an area like L.A., Atlanta, Nashville is a huge music community. Uh, People get discovered there all the time. So if you're looking to get into it, it all depends what you're trying to do. If you're trying to be a bedroom producer and sell beats online, it doesn't matter where you're from. You could be from Antarctica. It doesn't, you know, it it literally doesn't matter where you're from. As long as you have an Internet connection and 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 an imagination, you know, how would you approach things if if the band I'm going to give you a hypothetical. I just thought about this right now. If the Mm -hmm. band started today. And yep. was trying to get the, their selves out there, and it was in the middle of a quarantine. How would you operate this landscape right now? I think a lot of people are in that situation where they have all these great ideas, and they know the internet's power, but they just don't know where to start. Knowing what you let, let's say you you still are Larry O, and you're starting a new band, and you're getting ready to have better success than you even had with the last band. What do you what's sort of like your your initial game plan online to to really make it work? Um, Just trying out a lot of different content using, I think, for artists right now, artists and bands. I think TikTok is the wave. So I would study that even though I don't personally use a lot of TikTok. It's just, you know, it's it's the way I went with my content. But um, even Instagram, you see a lot of people blowing up on Instagram, too. Um, I would create a lot of dope content on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. If you're a band and you're in quarantine right now, it's no excuse. You don't have to be torn. You can make a lot of money online. Right now, you could still do it. You could um, do cover songs, popular songs, cover them. If you're a band and you have multiple band members, you can you can record remotely now, even if you can't be around your band. There's literally no excuse. Yeah. So just <laughs> email back and forth recording files. You know, do it that way. Have one person that maybe produces the whole thing. That like that's how I was in my band. There was I was like the producer. You know, the tech guy when it came to that sort of thing. I was the one who recorded everything, who made all the beats, who thought of a lot of the the the, the writing and stuff like that. Right. Um, not the vocals, but like instrument stuff, and. Um, I think just doing popular trends on social media and you see a lot of these these guys and, and girls and bands um, gaining a lot of popularity by doing stuff that's familiar to the audience. Mm. So a lot of times they don't want to hear things that are completely original. You kind of have to grasp them somehow. That's why you see a lot of people blowing up on TikTok saying how to make a Travis Scott type beat or a yeah. Travis Scott type vocal and they go into it. That's not them that's them falling into a trend but also putting their personality and their their little uh their personality behind it mm-hmm. and showing how they would do it and, and their sound in return i've seen i think i can't remember the dude's name i think it's joel something but he does the uh and now for the ad libs you ever seen that dude on tiktok and instagram no 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 he does, nah, nah. He does he does those like how to make a Tory Lane song and he makes the beats and he does like a little bit of vocals oh yeah 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 i have seen, i saw he did a yeah. drake one didn't he yeah, he did a whole bunch of people, yeah. bro. And he's a great example because now he's putting his own music out there. And because people fell in love with his personality mm. and his branding, he's now streaming his own original music. That's crazy. And a lot of people say, I don't want to do the covers. I don't want to do that. I mean, that you don't have to. You, you don't have to. But that's a nice way to introduce yourself to a large audience. And yeah. that goes for any rappers, singers, bands, producers, too. Do like... 
it, that's a, it's just a great way to gain attention right. at first. And then you can kind of fall back off of that once people start liking you and your personality and your originality. You see a lot of them just fall back and then they don't have to go to that how to make a blank type beat mm -hmm. or a blank type song. But that pivot is going to be so important to, to always have that in the back of your mind. And I think a lot of folks, man, they get so they get so they become so successful and they feel like they don't have the freedom to pivot. But you're so right is that you got to always have that in your mind. Like it is going to be about my music. But I think father to father, you, you, you can understand this, too, is that it's no different from when we want to get. You know, our our, 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 our babies to, to take some medicine, but you got to give a little bit of something sweet around it or, or something like, here, here yeah. I'll, give you this, I'll give you this candy if you, <laughs> it's, it's, it's no different from the audiences that, that right. consume music because they they don't, they don't owe us anything. They don't know you, they don't owe you. Um, and so I think that's where it's important to figure out how can you be memorable? How can you do things that make them say, I think I've seen this person before. And you did that so efficiently with your your tag, with the the sound effect, with the uh, you yeah, get me with that with that <laughs> fast distortion on your voice, like I always joke. But you did that, and you did it in such a um, a consistent manner that I think a lot of people, uh, a lot of creatives, can't find the balance between consistent branding and their creative spirit. Because a lot of them will look at mm -hmm. that and be like, I can't keep doing this over and over. I get people are gonna get bored. What would you say to them who are like thinking with that side of their brain? Um, I think you just got to stay on top of things and constantly learn yourself too. like stay like pay attention to what's going on in the community and in music in general. Just pay attention and try to create new different ways, new different content videos, more entertaining content. That's why I always like I'll always switch things up and you'll see me go back and forth and I'll once in a while, I'll do still to this day how to make a blank type beat and do that in a video because I know some producers might want to see that. And I'll I'm always thinking like every day, bro, after this, I'm going to be sitting here brainstorming a video for today. I haven't even finished the video for today. So today's and just like any other day. So you where just I have to do one of these a video that's going to do good. Yeah, I'm pretty much doing them on the fly right that's now. Crazy. Bro. <laughs> yeah. Um, during last summer, I was like kind of stockpiling them a little bit. Like I had like four or five at, at a time, but I don't know. I kind of like fell back. I didn't, I, I didn't get lazy with it. I just like, I just fell into a routine where I know every day I can come into the studio, um, think of one and get one out within like an hour and a half right. and like have it posted and everything. And it doesn't take up too much of my time. And obviously, the more successful you become, I'm sorry, I was texting my wife. She was telling me my son is up and she was up till five. So I'm like, OK, we are almost done with this podcast episode, ma'am. We will. <laughs> I'll be there in a second to relieve you. Uh, right. But um, but no, I, I think that there's so many lessons that people can learn from um, from your your journey, because your journey is one that. It, it 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 can stand as a template for what success looks like and how success um, success is not just a one way journey, man. And it's not, you know, because you could have easily been how a lot of folks are. They get to that 2014 era where things were looking so good and they're always playing catch up to that and they never rebrand themselves mm -hmm. and they never go back at it with the ferociousness and just that tenacity. Yeah. And you've done that. You continue to do that. And so um, this is one of the main reasons I wanted to make sure that the producers out there who are waiting for somebody to come save you, you're waiting for somebody to come. You know what I'm saying? You're waiting for somebody to yep. come be your, your knight in shining armor. But the, the 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 truth about it is this, and I'm seeing this with Larry, is that um, it doesn't surprise me that you're doing some stuff on the fly because it's like you've already invested so much time and you have done so much great work that now there there comes the companies that are here to distract you a little. Not here to distract you, but they 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 yeah. give you great opportunities that are mutually beneficial. But like now the plugins start coming in here. Now they're like, hey man, are we we're seeing your growth and uh, your audience engagement <laughs> yeah. is fire. And all of a sudden yeah. they come. All of a sudden those opportunities for people who want you to record them. Because something I love about your branding is that your beats are all on point. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, the, thanks, the, the 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 music it backs it up, and I think that's so important. Um, but yeah, man, as we come to the end of this, man, I, I want I want you to leave the production community, the producer community, not only with some words of wisdom, but let them know how to find you, sir. 
Yeah, you can find me on all social media at Lario with two H's, L-A-R-R-Y-O-H-H on everything. You all get right. me. <laughs> okay. And what about some words of inspiration or some words of encouragement for somebody um, that uh, wants to become the next Larry O? <laughs> uh, he laughs. <laughs> you laugh as if there's not some folks out there right now that's like, man, if I could only just be, man, I just love to be Larry O, whatever that means. Uh, just don't, I think the number one thing is uh, you got to fail a bunch. I mean, look at just in this, like in this one podcast, I, I probably mentioned three things along the way that I failed at. Right. And I've been doing this since 2008. And um, well, I started the band in 2008. So I've been making beats since maybe 2006 ish. And um, I failed uh, a lot of times, you know, I failed a lot and I just kept going. So you're going to fail. It's good to fail. You learn lessons. And when you learn lessons, you, you progress in life, you progress in your craft. Right. So you need to fail in order to get where you're at. And I'm still to this day, failing at certain things, you know, but I've been doing this for a long enough time where I've, I've learned a lot of lessons. Believe me, I learned a lot of lessons out there and failed a lot of times. So don't be scared to fail. And if you do fail, it's not the end. Just take that as a lesson. You can't take it as a negative. You got to take that as a positive and just keep moving. A lot of people, they fail and they think that's it. It's the end, you know, right. when really it's just the beginning of something else and they don't look at it like that. Man, these are words to live by. These are words that go even far beyond just music production. But um, for the producers out there that are listening, uh, I hope you found this to be very, very valuable. Um, definitely follow my man's up on his social media. For those that are listening from YouTube, uh, are watching this from YouTube, uh, I'll have the information in the description below. For those that are listening to via the the, uh, the, the distributors, the streamers, um, definitely keep keep your uh, you know keep your eyes open for at Larry O two H's, <laughs> right? I'll be having some people two Cur two S's for Curtis, so you know, right? <laughs> um, just look for the guy that looked like he could yeah. possibly be my cousin. <laughs> and um, no, but no, obviously, you know, uh, Larry O and I have have been working with each other uh, as of recent a whole lot more because we released a course together. So uh, advanced FL studio uh, dot com is how you find that course. But I really wanted to have an episode where it wasn't about selling anything. It was really about hearing your story. because I think a lot of producers can benefit from it. So we thank you for being on here and we, we, we thank you for having your presence here, bro. Thank you for having me on, bro. Of course, man. And it's life music producers. You will not be full of life until you decide to live life to its fullest. Once again, it's Curtis King of SlapExperts.com. Have a good one.